Hello, hi, I'm Jeffrey with Basecamp Custom Vans. Thanks for checking out this walkthrough video. We're doing a van tour of this Mercedes Sprinter camper van that's for sale. We're gonna jump inside and talk about the whole build and all of its features, but the van itself is a 2023 Mercedes Sprinter 2500. It's uh, the 144 inch wheelbase, so it's 19 feet overall. And this this guy has about just under 9,000 miles on it on it at this point. This is uh, this is one of the gas model Sprinters. It's the unfortunately the last year that they'll be putting out these gas models, which I've really grown to love them. I've been traveling in Sprinters for over 14 years now, and I've had a chance to own both the gas and the diesels over all these years. And for a bunch of reasons, I just love the gas. We have uh, way less maintenance cost. The fuel cost is way lower. Uh, it's, it's very smooth and quiet. It has all the power that those diesels have. So with the, uh, you know, with the diesel, you have that ticking engine. They're very loud, but the power is, um, is really what matters to people. I can't really tell the difference. They they have the similar speed and power. Uh, we are here in Colorado, and going up and down these mountain passes is where you'd really notice a difference. And you know these uh, these get around just great. They uh, like I said the you know at the pump you really see it. It's a dollar more per gallon uh, for diesel around here in Colorado. And the maintenance cost, you know, these get $90 oil changes at any quick lube. Uh, <laughs> trying with a diesel, good gracious, they're, uh, you, they have to be done at the dealership or at a diesel mechanic. And the oil changes alone are $500. Uh, you need a, you, need, you know, you need a $200 fuel filter every time. Um, the, it, it goes on and on with the maintenance. There, there's a known issue with the diesels that the, the DEF system um, had has had problems from the start and even if the def system the diesel exhaust fluid system works fine the, the you know there's wearable parts there's a diesel particulate filter that's a couple thousand dollars uh, the EGR valve to replace uh, these things are very expensive whereas this these gas models have none of those issues right so this is also a rear wheel drive model uh, which gets around just fine here in Colorado you know we, we've put you know studded snow tires on these and go anywhere in them and as a testament you know Colorado Mountain Express they've been shuttling people from Denver Airport up into the mountain towns of Aspen and Vail for 20 years in sprinters and they've never had all wheel rear wheel drive they've only ever had rear wheel drives uh, they, you know, they've never done the four by fours. Yeah, you know, with on these types of four service roads, we could take these vans anywhere, right? It's really you're just limited to you can't really go off road into like beach sand or something without a four by four. But otherwise, you can go anywhere you want, and nothing stops these. We've got um, big 52 inch light bar on the roof, lights up the road like it's daylight. Uh, we did a Raptor liner on the hood. AM Auto half slider windows. There's also a Raptor liner on these uh, van speed capsules. The capsules allow you to make the bed sideways. So we have a, uh, you know, 80 by 60 inch bed that um, 60 by 80, it's 80 across uh, this way, 60 inches. So it's a standard queen. And this bed is actually not fixed. Uh, permanently fixed we have a walkthrough feature where you just have to remove a few panels uh, so if you just take this mattress out and you know throw the mattress in the um, in the garage you could take these four panels out it allows it to be more versatile uh, you could put large things maybe you have to go pick up lumber or whatever uh, don't always need a bed for what you might be might be using the van for so it allows it to be uh, used uh, in different ways there is 33 inches uh, from the floor up to the bottom of this so you have um, you can put it put a couple of mountain bikes in there no problem the two cabinets that are fixed uh, one top one side over here we're housing these three 100 amp hour lithium batteries from Renogy so these are self-heating lithiums they have um, 
a heating element, you know, the, they turn themselves on, it's all automatic, but it protects them um, in freezing temperatures, the self-heating. It turns itself on when it senses 40 degrees and it has a heating element inside of them. Um, otherwise, uh, uh, you know, you don't have to think about it. There, 300 amp hours of lithium being charged. That's on the back wall there, there's the solar controller. There's 300 watts of solar on the roof. The other way it charges is here is a DC charger that uh, charges the the batteries while the van is running and when it's stop when you stop uh, when you shut the van off the van uh, you, you, you know it doesn't affect the starter battery you can be using these lithiums it cuts off the connection so I'm trying to say and that's all automatic as well up on the top there's a 3000 watt inverter the inverter you know, powers these two outlets that are up front for using uh, 110 appliances, you know, like coffee makers and blow dryers, stuff uh, of high, even high watt stuff doesn't affect, won't affect the 3000 watt uh, inverter like this. You can power blow dryers or whatever. And besides those two outlets up front, there's three on the face of this unit itself. So you can have extension cords come out here and uh, maybe use an air compressor or something. The this cabinet also has this amazing heat source propex heater so we've tried uh, in all these years we've been traveling we've tried all the different components we've tried the wabasto and the air top the s bar air top heaters you know when it they work fine until you're in the to the 20 degrees and those air top heaters they just struggle to keep the van cold once you're in the 20s or teens especially teens gosh they really there's a lot of cold spots near you know the floor down below will stay cold those those wabastos and s bars they work fine but not like th these propex heaters um will keep this van really toasty um, even in the teens, right? So this van is fully insulated in the floor, walls, and ceiling. So it keeps the, the heat in in the winter. It keeps the heat out in the summer. So on the other side of the, the other cabinet has a 25-gallon um, fresh water system. Uh, that's the 12-volt pump for it. And you can easily access the valves to, like, drain the tank or do whatever you need. And that all tucks away in these cabinets. Um, big cubbies on both sides and right here is the the fuse panel I don't even know if you can see it the fuse panel with the circuit breakers are in this easy access uh, panel here and so lastly on the roof is uh, besides the 300 watts of solar and that light bar is a couple of max air deluxe roof fans those roof fans allow you to uh, uh, create like a nice wind tunnel effect with two of them like they're set up um, they do go in both directions so you can exhaust out while it's cooked while you're cooking or you can turn one to exhaust and one to blowing in and create like this wind tunnel you can they're very versatile they also have the rain guards on them these are the deluxe models that have the the remote feature where there's automatic lifting lid and all the controls are either on the panel or on the remote the coolest feature of these is that they have the thermostat feature allows the fan to be uh you can turn the fan on uh, you don't really need the fan on as what I should say is when you go to bed at night but you have um, a thermostat feature where you can you can turn the the, the thermostat on and, and the fan won't turn on uh, until in the morning when it heats up in here it'll uh, it has a default to be like 70 degrees so once it's in the morning Sun and the van starts heating up uh, the fan will turn itself on and uh, the lid will lift itself up. The fans will regulate themselves uh, faster or slower as needed, all automatically with that thermostat feature. Really great. So I've I've actually kept the. It stays cool in here. I could keep with those fans going. I could have the dog be in here where it's like 90 degrees outside, and he's been fine. So I have another AM Auto half slider window. Side step full length side step on the passenger side here on the driver side there's a, also a short one and we could climb inside we got a lagoon uh, a lagoon accessory table that uh, just disconnects from the mount that's on the base of this uh, that can be stowed away maybe by the water tank or up here on top we have um, can stows up here real easily too uh, custom uh, overhead shelf 
So this utilizes the space over the driver and passenger seats. Uh, there's, there's still plenty of room to use the visor shelves and you don't bump your head or anything. Uh, it's high enough that you, it's not in the way, but it allows you to uh, have extra room up there maybe for you know some blankets or like I said, or this, this table which has to stow away. Um, it's set up, uh, it, it can only be used when the seats are turned around like they are. So these are on their seat, these suit seat swivels uh, swivel both seats around to allow for um, obviously driver passenger to be part of this camping area those are alpine mechanism seat swivels the best that you can get they're very thin they're, there's only a half inch rise on them so they don't raise the seat up like most of them they smoothly very easily turn uh, with no with no trouble and I'll jump in uh, let me jump in the driver's seat here Give kind of a view of everything. So we had some fun with the laser engraver. Uh, these overhead cabinets, uh, we have these fractal spirals like carved in uh, into these doors, and, and they allow you to they allow the uh, they allow the cabinet to have uh, light diffuse out through them from those LED strips that are in there. So you can see there's an LED strip that runs all the way through to the back. The lighting's controlled by these these sliders. There's two sliders on this uh, for, for both the puck lights and the LEDs. So you can dim the puck lights if you want. You can dim the LEDs and you can kind of set whatever kind of ambiance you want to have. Like I said, we have a big full-size queen uh, laying sideways with some overhead cabinets. Um, <laughs> the luxury of a nice full-size closet here. It's really nice to have your clothes uh, hanging in a closet. You can bring uh, in this bottom compartment, bring all the shoes. There's plenty of room and, and storage uh, for everything. And the galley has all the conveniences. So we got a big full-size fridge. Nice big 15 inch sink. You could throw a whole, whole pots and pans in there, plenty of room. And the sink is uh, situated where it is on purpose to have a dual use. We can um, also swing this arm out. We can shower off out there. You can like hose off a, a dirty mountain bike or a filthy dog uh, and, or shower myself off, right? You can take a shower easily uh, just standing right outside the window there. So we put the art, we set it up that way having tried over over time uh, different ways of, of having you know shower systems we've done it like we've done it like where we had the you know a shower sprayer by the rear doors right and you know I find if it's not easy and simple to do you just don't do it and the way I use the van is I always have uh, some mountain bikes on the trailer hitch I have a trailer hitch uh, bike rack and so there's always some bikes back there so for me personally to take the bikes off uh, just to get the rear doors open and it was kind of a hassle so I came up with a you know tried to innovate a new way of doing it and so came up with this uh, little way of doing the sink that way and you know we got screens on the windows and um, yeah like I said we've tried out all kinds of different configurations over time and um, got you know plenty of storage but I also have plenty of free space in here and you know it's very easy to overbuild these uh, we can I wanted to mention the induction cooktop <laughs> this induction we cook with induction but I like to have this, this the tabletop mount uh, versions where you can stow them away and get them out of the way so with the induction it's not like a cooktop where the thing gets hot it's just doing a magnetic exchange between the pot and the the unit so when I'm done using I could stow it away uh, in those cabinets and then use this tabletop for different things throughout the day right and so by having a fixed if you, I've done it in the past where we cut in the table cut in a, a cooktop on the top and then uh, you know it's just a it's just it's a tempered glass surface that's it's kind of fragile you have to be careful with that and I use the countertop for different things throughout the day so cooking with induction and then stowing it away allows uh, again for more versatility right so I really do like get, like the um, you know we have the, the conveniences but we also have uh, you know 
plenty of free space in this type of configuration and it can sit on the floor here and and look out I could sit on the floor and use this uh, not just uh, for sitting on but uh, sometimes I'll sit there and have my laptop looking out there or in, in, while someone you know that I'm traveling with maybe is sitting here and using this table um, can, like I said, lay down can get on the floor and roll a yoga mat out and do some yoga so with this um, with this I really appreciate the free space in here as much as the things that that are built into it so it's easy to overbuild these right you can you've, you've seen them where they have countertop uh, another whole other uh, cabinet set up by the passenger door there and it starts to close this space off I find it's not always nice weather like this where you can have the door open right <laughs> and sometimes it's like you know, bad weather on a rainy day is stuck in here with a couple of people the the this the space gets feeling really small real quick uh, if you start overbuilding and putting a lot of cabinetry in and oh, also in this uh, almost forgot to mention we have a Trilino composting toilet that stows away in that cabinet so yeah the other thing worth mentioning is uh, not just the con you know we've traveled basically in those 14 years they've been traveling in vans um, I've traveled about 400,000 miles in camper vans so it's not just that, uh, you know, I've been, uh, had them for a long time, but it's been many, 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 many uh, extended trips, weekends away, and and just week, you know, road trips uh, of all of all different lengths. And uh, with that, we spent many nights in these, right? Spent many days and nights, and we've just tried out different configurations and just come up with. I think this is the best of all of the. Uh, of all the things we've learned over all that traveling, right? And the other thing we've learned from traveling in them a lot is is what's important in the build itself is that these materials have to be both durable and easy to clean. With, uh, you know, those are my requirements for every everything that comes into this. Uh, and with past builds, you know, and especially in the first ones, I've maybe tried cabinets from you know, cabinetry from Ikea, <laughs> Ikea cabinets, uh, just do not withstand the stuff that we do in these camper vans. We are not gentle uh, on these things. We're off on adventures, right? And things need to be durable and need to clean up easily. So with Ikea cabinets, they do, you know, you can damage those and there's no replacement parts. Uh, they're just made of melanine, uh, melanine covered. It's not even a Formica there. It's like a thin melanine with particle board is what all those materials are and they just um i've had they can look ratty and fail in a short amount of time all of this was fabricated um in, in the shop uh using the best materials so these cabinets are made of maple they're faced with uh formica so there's a, a laminate face uh that cleans up real easy also makes them a little more durable and butcher block countertops we've got aluminum uh aluminum protecting all the edges right so you can knock into things bump things uh, accidentally or whatever and everything's um, got all the doors have uh, rubber T molding uh, rubber molding along the edges everything's made to like withstand um, all the all that we do to these right and so it has to be you know those that has to just be easy to clean and durable right so with that in mind you know we've got this floor the, we've had some failures of the floors in the past and uh, between using uh, vinyl flooring that rolls out that stuff can look ratty really quick and uh, unfortunately um, vinyl plank flooring can fail in different ways I in one video we did vinyl plank flooring with which was a life proof brand from Home Depot it was very durable but and cleaned up easy the problem was those vinyl planks they they link together they're like interlocking and after some time where it had gotten hot and then cold, hot and cold, the, the expansion and contraction of the floor made a seam split right down the middle. <laughs> was, all the cabinets were in. It was such a hassle to like take everything out and refix everything. So with some, having had traumas with flooring in the past, like I set out to find the ultimate flooring. And here it is. This is marine vinyl waterproof flooring uh, that's made for boat decks. 
and so it's it's built it's made to withstand uh, constant exposure to UV in the sea and salt and the elements uh, uh, constant exposure for up to 30 years so this stuff cleans real easy it's waterproof and very very durable so I got a sample of it tried to stain it with some wood stain that which just wiped right off and this dark wood stain stains everything right that's it just wiped right off no problem tried to damage it uh, with the with a chisel I'm trying to like scrape it uh, drag it across or strike at it like this it didn't leave a mark so I couldn't be happier with uh, we have the ultimate floor where you kind of have the all the best materials that that can make this van look and function great for decades to come and we have um, yeah you know nice comfortable open spacious layout so the van is available and if you are interested, um, we're happy to do like a video call on one of the video phone apps like FaceTime or Messenger has one, uh, Zoom works well, and we could answer all your questions, point the camera at anything maybe I didn't get to cover. And if you are interested, please don't hesitate to reach out. So I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks so much for watching this. Have fun.